Hi, it's Sherry Kalurgis with At 45, the magazine for women when life changes. And today we're continuing with our Women in Art series with Rome Gallery. And I'm very excited to have with me Tammy Bailey, who is from uh, Vancouver, Canada, and a marvelous artist. Welcome, Tammy. Oh, thank you so much, Sherry. It's uh, wonderful to be spending some time with you. Um, I'm very honored and grateful and, you know, certainly love to be a, um, a part of the Rome Gallery Society um, of wonderful, amazing artists. I feel very honored. So thanks. Well, Rome Gallery, they are doing, an, uh, Jen is doing an amazing job and there is such a collection of, of women doing amazing art. So I've really had fun with this series. It's, it's been quite um informative because I'm not from the art world so I found it quite fascinating. Yeah well Jen um, you know she just really believes in what she does and she's so kind to all of the artists and her integrity is above and um, you know and beyond I just I can't say enough good things about her and she's given myself so many opportunities as well as all of the other artists and just passes that forward and I think that's the most endearing thing I like about her is that she continues to pass forward uh, all of her um, it, her connections her experience her strength and yeah so thanks as well as you Sherry so thank you well we're, I'm really looking forward to chatting today so what kind of artist are you? Oh my goodness. Um, well, um, I'm primarily a self-taught artist. Uh, I originally started with uh, acrylic and then kind of moved to mixed media. And now I've been working with watercolor and I absolutely love the watercolors because of the portability of them. I can take them with me everywhere I go. And, you know, acrylic is, is wonderful too in the mixed media, but there's just more involved to take that and transport that. And um, now that my husband and I are getting to our um, retirement years, so to speak, um, it's nice to be able to just pack up the watercolors and go. So, um, you know, uh, as well, I always take photos when we're away, but it's really nice to be able to do plein air and not to have to pack a big um, crash kit, so to speak. So yeah, but I guess I, I, I all types of art I enjoy, you know, thanks. And how did you get uh, into art, Tammy? Oh, well, you know, interestingly enough, um, you know, I've always kind of dabbled. I'm, I've always been, I guess, creative or that creative side of me. I've always wanted to nurture, you know, I used to do lots of different crafts and, and I did actually make jewelry for a period of time. Um, and from that, um, you know, I always admired painters and always wondered about the process and how that actually happened. But it was something when I looked at it, it was way too intimidating for me at the time. But a wonderful dear friend and a fellow artist through Rome uh, was doing paint nights. Um, this was oh, 10 years ago now and I went to a paint night and I was hooked and I've never looked back um, and just kind of continued to grow from there. So for the first you know few years, I followed her around every paint night like a puppy and um, kind of learned. But I think the most thing she taught me to be was to be fearless and not to be afraid and to just continue to try. And then I think she began to realize that I really did enjoy it. And she said, you know, you need to, and it was probably one of the best pieces of advice that I ever got, create a space for yourself where you can just always create. And so, um, you know, our adult children were moving and growing out of the house or, and, um, so with that, I kind of took over a bedroom and created a studio space and I've never looked back. I've always had a studio. Um, when we sold our home and downsized, um, from there, that was one of the criteria that I needed a, a, a wonderful studio space. And my husband, bless his soul, he's such a kind spirit and, you know, always nurtures me and supports me in all of my endeavors. Um, you know, we created this beautiful space together for me down here. So, you know, we've got an um, in-ground basement, um, walk -out, actually a walkout basement. And um, this is where I could spend multiple hours. So very, very grateful. Oh, it sounds fabulous. Now, mm -hmm. paint night, that's a really unusual way to get started on it. I know I went to a paint night um, a number of years ago, actually, and I still have the painting. 
But yeah. uh, it, it's actually quite a popular uh, way to to see if you like painting or sort of uh, scratch that itch if you if you need something to do. Well, you know, I think with the paint nights, as you said, it's a wonderful way to be creative. But um, I also found, you know, and I, I have taught paint nights as well myself. I haven't been during the pandemic, which, you know, is understandable. Um, absolutely love that. Um, the, the community of women and men that come together and they get to do something that they've never done before or um, they get to grow. But I also saw the women and especially the women in these groups um, grow together and bond and tell stories and sh share their their experiences and and it was just wonderful and for me you know there's always something intrinsic in everything that we do and so I would learn wonderful things from these women about their life and about their hopes and their dreams and but they would also share with me their love of art and I would share my love of art with them and it, it, you know it's just such a a, a, a a beautiful transaction that happens within these paint nights. And I always paint, did them in cafes and you got to know the owners of the cafes really well. And it was, it's, it's just a really nice um, way to spend three hours and decompress. And a lot of the people that were coming in to do the paint nights were coming from work and that's what they wanted to do. They just wanted to let go and enjoy themselves for a few hours. And, and I can't think of anything better to do. So, yeah. Yeah, it's actually a really um, uh, unique way. I know lots of our, our readers and listeners are, you know, from outside of the, the big cities. And so it's, it, it would actually be a great way to get together with your friends and just and have some activity to do, too. Oh, uh, certainly. And, um, you know, and, and that is the one thing, too, as an artist, um, and many artists share this, it can be quite isolating because when you're in your studio and painting on your own, although it's, it's wonderful, and you get into this meditative flow, um, it can be um, quite isolating. So from that perspective, um, it's really nice to be part of the Sosuri White Rock Arts Society and other connections or also to get together and teach a class because you get to connect with other people. Yes, I can understand that. And it is amazing, isn't it? How many, um, oh, there's just so many unusual women around and, and that bonding that, that there's an opportunity for when you get together with women, it's very empowering. It is very empowering. And I think, you know, we lead such busy lifestyles and um, to be able to get together and connect with other women and other people, um, whether it be in art or in other activities, um, you know, it's so very important because, um, you know, I've learned a long time ago and I often come back to that. It's really difficult to grow in a vacuum, um, really, really hard. And, um, you know, I uh, walk that road of, I can do it all myself for many, many years and discovered that, you know, it just doesn't work. So yeah, it's important to get together. Absolutely. Now, um, what, what objects or subjects do you paint? Uh, do you have a favorite or? Um, I think I re a favorite, oh my goodness. Every painting that I paint is my favorite. And I know that sounds rather cliche, but um, the one thing that my artist taught me to be is fearless. And so I pretty much will try anything, some more successfully than others. Um, but I really enjoy painting um, landscapes, um, subjective um, abstract landscapes so that they are still based on a photo or a picture, but I do change it um, sort of as the painting sort of speaks to me, so to speak, and we get this interchange that happens while I'm doing it. Um, the other, I really enjoy doing whimsical animals. Um, I enjoy mm. painting animals. And I really love when people honor me with photos of their family and I get to capture those intimate moments with them and um, especially children um, and walking. Uh, there's something about walking away and I haven't quite figured out how, but anyhow, um, I, I really do love that. So I think I'm a fairly well-balanced. I can paint just about anything. 
Um, you know, I, I'll be honest, my drawing is not the strongest. Um, but I make up for it, I think, with the brush and the paint. So I, I think I'm fortunate that way. And did you say that you were always interested in art, Tammy? Like uh, from a child, did you like to, to draw or paint? I've, I think I've always been that way inclined. I was very, I, I did enjoy drawing and painting when I was a child. But as a child, I don't know that I ever showed any like true a true interest in it at that point. Um, uh, I mean, my childhood was quite different. Um, um, that's another story, but um, anyhow. Um, but as I got older, I loved doing crafts. I would sew um, and do different types of crafts. And always at Christmas, people look forward to my gifts because they were always handmade. Mm. Um, so I guess that part of artistic side. And then I started working with um, beads and I started making jewelry and people absolutely loved it. So I continued to do that and I continued to pass it forward in the way of gifts. I never really pursued it on a commercial level. People always said, oh, you should. And then um, I love music. I play guitar. Um, and so I, I've always had that aspect in my life for sure. Um, it wasn't until, interestingly enough, I went back to school at a very late age and I did some counseling support skills um, classes. And with that, I needed to do a practicum. And that practicum took me to a local women's services. And I was co-facilitating a group of women um, and with an artist and she's an amazing artist. Her name is Deborah Putman. And it was her art, I think that finally, or well, I shouldn't say finally, that actually started to draw me into, I wish I could be an artist because her art is amazing. And the um, what I saw in it and how she expressed it. And I thought I really wanted to do that. So lo and behold, I co-facilitated with her for about five years. Um, and I started to pick up a paintbrush and um, it was with Ellen that I did. So I guess in a way it's always been there. It's just, you know, as I say, when the uh, student is ready, the teacher will appear <laughs> or well, vice versa. It you can go either way. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds um, like you were very creative. You were creative. So, so you're coming by it honestly. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I do come by it honestly. My mom, you know, it's interesting. I would always love to talk to her because I have, um, she passed away, you know, more than 25 years ago, but I have wonderful artwork that she did as a young child and she was a wonderful uh, cartoonist and she drew and, and I always wondered why she never pursued it. And I wish today I could ask her, but I think it's probably life, you know, we get married, we have children, you know, and you're busy working and, and creating that whole, and it, when you're ready, then you're ready and not before. And so, you know, I didn't start painting until I was, you know, in my late forties. Wow, that's amazing. And that you have the art from your mom still, that's very special. I've kept all of it and she did amazing leather work as well. So I've kept all of that. I'm very, very sentimental that way, so. Oh, that's, that, that's wonderful. My mom was quite artistic and uh, we have a few few pieces, but I remember one year, uh, my birthday is on January 2nd. And so my birthday was always getting over, or overshadowed by Christmas. And so one year she, we, she made a special effort to have a birthday party for me. And she hand uh, did, drew all the invitations and, and I'll never forget that. I wish oh, I could add a piece. Yeah. 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 Do you so, have any of them? No, I don't. We do. I do have some uh, drawings that she's done, but but not mm -hmm. that. But I always remember uh, remember it really fondly. It's, it's a great memory of her. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I think different day and age too for for our parents. So yes. Yeah. I think it was very difficult for women to to find that time. Uh, you know, in our in our mother's area, to actually have, find that time where they could focus on themselves. 
Well, it, yes, I mean, it was, as you said, it was a very different time and age and, you know, and, and they were very much brought up to be the nurturers, the carers, and, you know, the primary, the, 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 the heart of the home, so to speak. And, um, you know, today we're fortunate that that we can still do all of that. But, um, you know, I look at my um, son and his wife and they share, you know, all of those responsibilities. And that's so nice to see and that we were able to pass that forward because my husband was, is, was very much that way and continues to be very much that way. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely has made a difference. Plus women nowadays, you know, we have, we're living longer. So we have more time, uh, you know, when we get to the retirement stage or as we age, it, there, there's still a lot of time to explore different things where it wasn't quite the same way for our mothers, I think. Well, that's true. But, you know, I honestly do find that, you know, everybody kind of dreads the big 50. And when I hit 50, it was, it's just been be great. It's been great. So. <laughs> Well, that's not the way I feel years, but it's been pretty good. So. <laughs> yeah. so tell me a little bit more about the work uh, that you were doing uh, with the women's group. Uh, like, Oh, well, um, part of it, as I said, my practicum was, um, was to um, go and do um, uh, like volunteer hours. And, um, and I've always been a very strong um, believer in giving back and so um it the the group that we did it was called women of um, power and passion and it was through a local women's services here in white rock um at the time and we would go in the evenings and co-facilitate a group of women that um you know had had come from abusive backgrounds and um it was a huge eye-opener for me and i was also at that time too volunteering my time um, through Elizabeth Fry Society um, one day a week at a support recovery house um, and um, that was an amazing experience too and uh, you know some very important life lessons learned there a very humbling um, um, in both experiences and um, I felt very honored I thought for a long time that I maybe wanted to become a counselor um, but um, I'm glad that I chose the path that I chose because I really feel that this is where I want to be in my life right now. So. And what do you feel is the most rewarding thing about either the art or, or what you're doing with the art, like helping other women? What, what? Um, I think the most important thing with my art, honestly, is being able to share the joy that I experience while painting and the joy that when somebody actually connects to a piece of art and they love it and they want it, it's just so wonderful. And um, uh, also, you know, teaching classes, um, being able to give those people um, some respite um, and time to connect and time to get out of, you know, the crazies, we talk about that, hamster, page you know running around it and that's what art does for me it's a time for me to be very thoughtful very meditative you know it's very surreal when I'm truly engaged with the piece of art that I'm painting um I lose myself and um you know come back and it's painted and you go where did that come from and 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 it's very spiritual for lack of a better way to describe it. I, there's just this one wonderful connection. But for me, I know how therapeutic and cathartic it is. Um, and I see that in people that come and paint. And you, it's almost like it, you wanna share that joy with the world. Um, and it's also wonderful to take a moment in time, an intimate moment. And a lot of my photos, um, you know, I take, and they're very, um, innate, um, innate, when, I don't know if it's the right word, um, they're very simple photographs, and to be able to paint them, and to give them life, and have them, uh, give, have meaning, um, what would be, uh, one of my favorite ones is Crying Over Broken Shells, and it's a beautiful little angel sitting in a lavender field, 
um, with all these broken shells around her and it's it's a statue and I don't know that most people would have taken the moment to even look at it and and realize sort of the beauty of that moment and all of the emotion and what this could say and what it could share and it's turned out to be one of my most favorite paintings and people love it the cards and um, you know the prints and most people would have walked past it into the shop that it was in front of and not even given that little moment the time that it 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 spoke to me that it needed and and so you do cards in that with your paintings too then like i do those? yeah okay. and prints yeah so um you know um because not everyone wants original art or can afford original art um, and you want to be able to share that. So I've taken some of my um, uh, pieces and I've had them um, done up in, I've done prints as well as uh, cards. And they've been very well received. And, you know, I'm happy to share. Like, sometimes it's not necessarily about, you know, obviously I want to be able to pay for my, my art supplies, but sometimes it's just about passing forward. It really is. It's just sharing the joy. Well, and I, and I think that's the wonderful thing about art. It, it is sharing the joy. You know, if, uh, like you mentioned, the, the one picture of the statue, it gave you joy while you were looking at it, but you're also sharing that joy every time somebody else sees it. Right. And, you know, and that's exactly, it's, it's passing it forward. And especially, um, you know, if it's something um, that it's tangible, like it's a card and they can pass it forward. And there's the thought of giving that card and then passing it forward. I'm sharing what I felt about that card and they're sharing it as they pass it forward. So, yeah. Absolutely. So uh, are you from Vancouver? Have you always lived here? Um, no, um, I'm actually, I, I am Canadian, um, but um, I was born in Cranbrook. Um, but in saying that, um, we lived in, um, in Canada for a while, but my dad was a bit of a dreamer and packed us up and moved us to Central America when I was eight. And we lived in Central America for quite a few years before we moved back to Canada. So um, I, yeah, I had a very interesting childhood. Oh, that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> and and what, what's your favorite memory of, of being in South America then? Um, oh my goodness, the favorite memory would be how beautiful it was. And uh, we lived in um, Corzal Town, which is um, in the, in just outside of Belize City. Um, and we're going back now 45 years. So you can imagine it was very different than what it would even be now. But it was beautiful. And, you know, just, um, we got to travel and see a lot of the different, we went as far as um, Guatemala, traveled into Guatemala, went to Tikal and saw it when it was first being uncovered. It's one of the Mayan, oh. yeah, Aztec, yeah. So I, I, I think I, it was just amazing. Um, we took, my parents sold everything. We bought a Winnebago and we drove down to, um, at that time it was called um, Belize. It's now Central America, I believe. Anyhow, I went to school there. It was um, uh, it was still English speaking because it was um, at that time part of the British colonies, um, but very different dirt floors. You know, I learned how to embroider. <laughs> so maybe that's where my artistic <laughs> skill comes from. <laughs> that was, you know, the girls, the boys went to woodworking and the girls learned how to sew and embroider. And, I, and you know, um, it was it was a wonderful adventure, um, but it certainly felt like cul culture shock going down and then also coming back. So right, yeah. um, I think I have an appreciation of um, different cultures and I love to travel. Um, I'm certainly uh, not afraid to um, try, you know, and I, I hope to see many more parts of the world. So yeah, that that's once once you've experienced living somewhere else I think it, it's always in your blood that that it, you want to explore and see what else there is yeah and and Belize in itself is a beautiful country like the waters and the sand and 
and uh, it's just you know breathtaking so um we actually did go back a few years ago oh. and um yeah, and it was quite an adventure. We took the kids, and um, anyhow, um, it hasn't changed much in terms of its beauty, um, but it still is very much the way I remember it in terms of the shanty towns built up on, um, you know, and it, it, it was interesting, anyhow. Um, not a place, I don't know that I want to go back again, but uh, it, was, it was fun to take the kids for sure. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah. Very, that, that's really neat. Yeah. And in those days, uh, like 40 years ago, people wouldn't, it wouldn't be a common thing that you would be doing. No, um, certainly not. We stayed in a small mobile park that was close to um, the actual city of Corzal or Little Town. And um, there was an American family and they had two children, which was wonderful. So then we befriended them. And um, there was a British doctor that was there working. And that was about it. And I think that the actual um, place where we were, were staying was owned by Americans, but uh, it was very, very different. My dad had hoped to go down um, to do pipelining because he was a welder, but I think he was just a little bit premature, but um, certainly a very interesting experience, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Our I wanted my best memories was to give you an idea of how rural it was of course there was cane fields all around in that because that was their primary thing and there was this really bumpy road that went past where we were we were staying and there was a corner and when we would hear the cane trucks coming with the local kids had taught us that you went running to the corner because it was one really bad bump on the corner and the cane truck would always be open on the back and it would come around the corner and cane, pieces of cane would fall off. And then we would all run out to grab the sugar cane and fight over it so that we'd get the best piece so we could chew on the sugar cane. So it was quite fun. I, I, I remember this to, the, to this day and there's nothing like fresh sugar cane, I have to say. So. Wow, what a beautiful memory. There's a painting in that memory for sure. Oh, probably. <laughs> yeah, actually, that's a good point. And maybe I should do that. <laughs> uh, uh, that's an amazing thing for, for you, for your family to have done. Yeah, I, well, you know, it's interesting. So here's the other side of the story. So the story that we don't, I, I, and I'm happy to share it publicly, but it doesn't matter. My dad was a raging drunk. Mm. So it, there's that whole other side, right? But, yeah. you know, today I don't necessarily focus on that, but it really is part of that whole um, growing up process, right? So, yeah, yeah, like lot, lots of stuff going on. So, oh, yes. but, um, but yes. you know, he was a dreamer and he did share that, you know, with us. So, uh, you know, that I'm grateful for, you know, I don't. Yeah, it took a lot of years to heal for a lot of with a lot of stuff, but yeah. that's you know, yeah. Yeah, alcohol is, uh, can be very destructive. My my uh, grandfather was an alcoholic, and uh, it doesn't it doesn't go you know it doesn't um I don't everybody has a story. I've learned that you know, and, and even like with the White Rock Women's Services when I was facilitating there, and the women were coming in and they were coming back in from abuse backgrounds, but. Everybody, I think what it taught me is that that time I felt so isolated because I was in early recovery myself, mm -hmm. that it, it, it put it, everyone under the same umbrella. We mm -hmm. all have a story. Yeah. And um, so that was a really important life lesson for me. But like I said, I don't know that there's any one life lesson, right? It's just, no. yeah. We keep learning until we've learned what we need to learn. Then, well, and <laughs> well, that's true. But I think uh, uh, for me, that's yeah, to continue to learn so important. And that's what I love. Every day I wake up and it's a blank age, and I and it's what I choose to do with it. Yeah, you know. uh, I can just see it as you're talking. <laughs> yeah, fighting with each other. Yeah, over the cane. Oh, but always worried that there might be another truck coming because it was a really steep, sharp corner. But anyhow, yeah. Uh, so uh, now that you are doing painting, have you retired? Did, did I understand that you're? Oh, um, well, I'm, I, no, I'm not retired. I still work. Um, I work three and a half days a week. Um, so I think I've got a really good balance in my life. And um, 
you know, I don't know if I'll be retiring in the near future. I don't think so. Um, you know, I really do enjoy my work. Um, but my art is very different than my work because I work in a very busy office. And uh, so the art is more the right side of the brain. And I use my left side of the brain when I'm at work. But yeah, and I enjoy the women that I work with. And, and I have very wonderful employers. And um, so, but three and a half days is enough. It's good. That's good. I go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, come home half day on Thursday. It's perfect. Yeah. So you used the word, you felt you had good balance. And I think there are so many women struggling to find balance in their life. So I'm <laughs> wondering, do you have a key piece of wisdom that you'd like to share with women as to, you know, how, how you approach getting balance in your life? You know, for me, finding balance in my life has been a journey. And I don't know that we ever have perfect balance in our life, quite honestly. Um, trying to, um, you know, I, it, 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 I always go back to what we taught in our group um, about balance and drawing a circle and join dividing the key components of your life up into equal segments like a pie um, and thinking of the outer side outer edge of the circle being the optimum of you have enough in your life towards the inner edge of the pie having the least amount in your life so dividing it up and then it would be um, for me so I would dr draw a circle and it would be okay art in one part family, love, exercise, and then to draw the dots on each segment of that pie and, and, and then connect the lines to see where you are and where you need to nurture yourself. And for me, that was a really good visual on the areas that I needed to work on. But I also think it also falls back to having healthy boundaries and learning to be able to say no and feel comfortable with that. Because, um, you know, for a long time, I would say yes to a lot of things that I didn't necessarily have the time or the energy for. But I did it because I thought it was the right thing to do. And I'm understanding now it's important to be able to say no and feel comfortable with that. And, um, and do what nurtures me. Because if I don't take care of this person, um, then I'm not of value to anybody else. So and it's important to have th that kind of balance. And so going back to the pie, when you look at it, if there's areas that I need to work on, then, then it's a visual for me to, okay, uh, maybe I'm not exercising enough and um, I need to spend more time exercising. Maybe I'm not spending enough time with my family and I need to, I want to spend more time with my family, then I can adjust that. I guess because I am an artist and everything's very tactile and visual for me, um, have, looking at a graft is um, not a graft, but sort of a, a, a I guess it is a graft, um, mm -hmm. helps me. Yes, and, and, and I always love that visual uh, because I always say wherever you're you're not at your optimum it's a flat spot and so how how, how can you go on a flat tire right and, and so exactly. often that that's what we're trying to do as women we forget that we we are entitled to be selfish and that our our life has to be well-rounded or we can't be happy and we can't uh people you know we can't share that happiness with the people around us well you Exactly. And, you know, and, and I spent a lot of time, you know, taking care of when we talk about our younger years and, and life journeys. Um, I spent many, many years so busy taking care of everybody else and doing what, it, what I thought everybody expected of me and um, that I forgot to take care of myself. And, you know, I crashed quite hard. And, and so it's, I, I, you know, we learn from that. And I've learned now to pay attention to the little nudges and not wait for the brick to hit me on the head. So, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a lesson that's too bad. It always takes us so long to learn. <laughs> you know, it, I, it, but that's just, that's life, right? Yes. Isn't it? It's just yes. life. It is. Now, yeah. I know that you actually have made a really concentrated effort 
with the exercise part and and you're a runner I understand well I mean I I to say I am a runner I am a runner I'm not as dedicated as I used to be um uh, I made a decision at the age of 50 by the age of 50 to run my first marathon so um I worked towards that goal and I had run many halves um and you know trained on my own and it was all really good and that was something that I really could incorporate around having a, a teen children because I could go out in the evening and, and run and do whatever but I figured that if I was going to run a marathon I should um you know connect with people that know know what they're doing because I didn't think that I could undertake that on my own so we have a wonderful running club here through Peninsula Runners um and I joined them and I started to train for my first marathon and, and they have a wonderful program. And with that, I met one, many, many women that are very dear friends that I, I still uh, get together with, still run with on occasion. And I have another girlfriend that I run with once a week now. Um, and I trained from, from my first marathon and, and these women are amazing. Um, you know, their ages between vary between 40 up to 75. We're, we're like, these, these are the women that I look to that, that I want to be like, you know, when I grow up <laughs> and they're, they're just amazing. So anyhow, they said, you get it. So I trained for my first marathon um, and I ran my first marathon and the one that my first marathon that I ran here was the Boundary Bay Marathon here in, um, between White Rock and uh, Ladner and uh, ran it, uh, finished it, cried, um, and uh, really funny story. Um, I didn't know, uh, I was told by my sports doctor because I had a bit of an injury going into the race um, that, um, you know, after taking Epsom salts bath and I thought, okay, so anyhow, cried, thought I'm never doing this again. It was the worst thing I've ever done <laughs> but I mean and I did it you know which was good but anyhow got home and I hadn't taken into consideration when you run those types of distances there's a lot of chafing that happens um and you try to do everything to avoid that and then there's special waxes you can do or whatever but anyhow got into the Epsom salts bath and screamed like a girl like oh. just screamed because obviously the Epsom salts and uh, my husband like are you okay and I'm I'm fine I'm fine I was so sore and so tired I couldn't even get out of the bath finally rolled out of the bath anyhow said I would never was going to do it again so then I went and, and all of my co-runners um avid runners you know, you have to try it again. You'll do it again. It'll be better. I promise it'll be better. So I trained again. And um, then we actually did, it was in the States. We ran, uh, did a half, our full marathon again. And uh, same thing came across the finish line, cried. It was just, my body was not designed for a full marathon. I, I just had to accept there was limits to what my body could and could not do. So I ran, I finished it, but I decided that half, is a good distance for me. It's okay. And I should be happy with that. And I am. And um, so I've, you know, continued to run. Um, but a couple, of, about a year and a half, two years ago, my husband and I decided that uh, we we're going to move some really heavy furniture upstairs. And the moral story there is don't don't move furniture when you get to a certain age. But anyhow, I ended up tearing um, the meniscus in one knee. So I've been recovering. But that's okay. So um, I've now got a bike and I've been riding my bike to and from work um, on days that the weather is conducive. So it's all good. And I'm up to running 10, um, 10 K again. Um, so I'm happy about that. And, um, you know, if I stay here at this point, I'm all right with that. And it's good. Yeah. Oh, well, congratulations. That's a great Thanks. achievement, especially yeah. starting when you're 50. <laughs> well, you know, it, yeah, it was, um, it was something that I wanted to do. And, and, you know, the women that I run with, they still, a lot of them are still running fulls and that's great. And, uh, you know, if I can run another half again, I'll be, you know, if I, I'm building up my knees feeling good now, I'll be thrilled. So, um, but if, you know, if it stays at around 10 K, I'm okay. I'm okay with that. Mm. Well, I think that's one thing about aging too, is that you know, not only are we having time to be selfish, but 
we we come to the realization that that there are limits to what we can can do and that we do and that it's okay we don't have to do it all we don't we don't have to do it all but we can rethink how we do it and um yeah. you know and i'm loving biking and um you know it's a good activity it keeps me in shape and yeah and I, I exercise as well but yeah so what is the key piece of learning that that stood the test of time for you oh my goodness key piece of learning That's a hard one because there's been, I've had so many epiphany and awarenesses over my, um, all my years. Um, I think the key piece of learning would be, it's so important to take care of this, mm. this person. Um, I think, um, and when you do that, everything else um, just falls into place and to be quiet, um, to take time to connect with whatever you need to connect with to make you happy, whether it be spiritually, emotionally, physically, in your relations, like, and that's all part of that overall balance. Um, I think, yeah, this to take care of this, this person. Yeah, and it's, it, it is very important. I, I, I think we all come to that that time where we realize, you know, I've had challenges with my health and that that mm -hmm. we're, we're only is we're only our life is only as good as as we're we are like you know as as we're capable of and, mm -hmm. and if we don't if we don't take care of ourselves, it, it, it's not a good thing. <laughs> Eventually, uh, we have to crash and burn is, is the way I look at it. Well, exactly. I mean, and you know, but the crash and the burn is part of the growth process, I think. I think that um, for me, I'm, I feel that as I've gotten older and I've crashed and burned pretty hard, and, and, and we all have, we all have a, we all have a story, we've all, but um, I don't crash and burn as hard these days and, and I don't have to vacillate between extreme emo emotions the way that I used to. And, and, and I think that's the comfort of getting older is maybe that's why they say we get older and wiser. At least I hope you do. <laughs> I agree totally. That's a really good, that's a really good analogy. So, well, it's been wonderful to get to know you, Tammy. You it's just fascinating story. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you for um, having me. It wasn't all art related, but um, it's nice to share a little bit of myself. And it's nice to talk to you, Sherry. I always enjoy talking to you. You're such a lovely lady. So, oh, well, thank yeah. You. Yeah. Well, I think we can all learn from each other. And that's why it's so important to share our stories, because you're, you're quite a, an inspiration to me. I mean, with the running and the art and the life balance, I mean, it, it, uh, you have a lot of wisdom to share. Well, um, thank you. Um, you know, and um, I only share what's been shared with me, quite honestly, you know, and, and I just pass it forward. And I'm very grateful that I've had people share their, um, as we say, experience, strength and hope. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, where can people, uh, so you're listed with Rome Gallery, uh, romegallery.com. Right. Um, but uh, do you have your own website? I do. Um, the art of Tammy Bailey dot com. Okay. Um, I had a wonderful developer make the website for me. Uh, Sherry, thank you so much. <laughs> oh, yes, you're welcome. <laughs> so the art of Tammy Bailey dot com. I'm also on Instagram under the art of Tammy Bailey. I also have my Facebook page, um, the art of Tammy Bailey. Um, Facebook is more just, you know, day-to-day -day stuff and postings of what I'm painting, what's, um, but my Instagram page very much echoes uh, Rome Gallery. And um, so certainly uh, take a look at all three. So thanks. Well, thank you. It's been wonderful.